I'm back. So, I mean, I normally like make a video and then I wait a little bit and I make an, another one build on that, but I'm, I just wanna do this now. I'm kind of excited. So here is what I did before. This is the uh, numerical calculation of the magnetic flux due to moving charge through a loop. Yep. So he, here's my moving charge and this is actually in, on top of, ooh, my mouse. On top of a loop right there, you see. And then each of these squares represents the uh, the magnetic flux in those squares where I can assume that if the square size is small enough then the then the flux through that square is constant so I can just say b dot n hat da to calculate the flux okay so I'm going to do let me review real quick about this magnetic flux idea and then and show you how I'm going to do it a different way and this new way I'm going to do it is with a Monte Carlo calculation uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun and it might not work but I do need this program because I need to know and I'll have it in the exact same location uh, there's my uh, flux. Is that right? That's really okay. That's small. Well, let's move it. Okay, let's move this real quick. Let's put it back where I know I had it originally. Um, let's see. The charge was at 0.1 over here. Let's change this. 0.1 and put that at zero. And let's run it. And it's going to look weird because I have to fix something. Let's fix this down here. Um, the max flux this is this max flux in order to change the opacity of each square. Where if, when the flux of each square is lower, it's more transparent. And that's just for art. Okay. Because it looks cool. And so the red, the red squares mean that it's a positive flux. And the negative, the blue would be negative flux. So 10 to the 2 times to the negative 10th. So I'll put this at... 2e negative 10, but the really thing I need is that 1.78 times 10 to the negative 8 and run it. Okay, and then I'm going to switch to paper. Yeah, see there it's lower flux on that side because it's darker. That is pretty cool. I mean, that's worth it. Okay, let's just see what we're going to do with a different way. And so this is the Cartesian uh, method where I broke this into squares and I had to add it up, which I'm pretty happy that it worked. Um, and that's not that many squares, but so switch to paper. Okay, so this is a moving charge and this is a loop and this is how we calculate the magnetic field at any location, right? So if I find the magnetic field there versus there, I have two different R values. And so that's gonna be QV cross R hat uh, divided by the magnitude of that squared and that gives me the magnetic field. Now, for the flux. The flux is the surface aerial in integral of V dot N hat DA. If I have a small area I use the same picture before, and I have my magnetic fields constant over that area, and let's say this is n hat, that's gonna be positive flux, yeah. Then I can assume that b dot n hat is constant. I can assume that b dot n hat is equal to the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them, because that's the dot product. Okay. And if that's the case, that constant value can come out front and I get the flux, it's called this delta flux because it's a little bit of flux, is going to be B cosine theta times the integral over DA, but that's just the, in, the area of that piece. So D flux is going to be B cosine theta delta A, where delta A is the size of that piece. And so before I did this by breaking this into squares, and I have to keep on moving my, and that each one of those squares, if they're small enough, then the magnetic field is fairly constant, and I can calculate this that way. But now I'm going to do it a fun way. This is the Monte Carlo way. So what if I did this? What if I say, let me draw a new piece of paper. Here's my circle. Uh, and let's say this has a radius of R, which it does. And let's say that I want to make a thousand points. I want to make a thousand pieces. I'm going to break this into a thousand pieces. But what I want to do is randomly put where those pieces are. So first, each of those pieces is going to be a little circle. Uh, the area of that circle, delta A, let's call it DA because I'm going to type it. DA is the total area, which is going to be pi R squared over R. No, wait, over N. Right, so that the total area, that's the area of each piece, and the total area will be a thousand times that, which will be the total area. So I'm going to randomly put these circles everywhere. I know their size and their area. And now for each of these random circles, if I have enough of them, they'll be evenly distributed such that I can treat them as the area of the whole thing. Uh, now for each piece, 
since I know the location, I'm gonna randomly generate the location, then I know the, the R location, right? Here's my charge over here. And this will be my R location. That's R piece, R, I called it RB. And we'll call that uh, charge.pos. So this would be RB minus charge.pos. R equals RB minus charge. P I'm mixing, I'm mixing Python and normal vector notation. Okay, so now the question is, how do you generate these pieces? Uh, in in GlowScript, there's the random uh, function. So random, just like that with parentheses, gives back a number between zero and one, somewhere between there. So what I want to do is to generate a random x value and a random y value but we need to have them evenly distributed. So if I, this is a, a uniform distribution between these numbers. So what I'm gonna do is say, uh, let's say x is gonna be uh, two times r times random minus one. So if r was one, a one radius of one, then this would be as high as two, 2 minus 1, which would be 1, and as low as negative 1. So this goes from negative r to r. Okay. So if, but I could get a block up here, a, a circle up here, or here, or here, or here. Right. So once I generate these, I'm going to do the y, same thing for the y. But once I generate that x and y coordinates, I'm going to see, I'm going to have that value. If the magnitude of this vector from the origin is greater than r, then I'm just going to throw it away. I just don't care about it. Okay, I'm only going to keep the ones that have uh, a, a magnitude less than or equal to r, and then I'll plot it. And then I'll, calc I'll add it to my area list, the same thing I did before. Okay, so let's just jump over here and do it. Okay, switch back over here to computer. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is copy this code so I can have the, uh, so I can have the same thing. Um, let's, just, let's just do this the, the barbaric way. I'm just going to copy the whole thing. Uh, and then I'm going to open a new window and then trinket.io. Uh, so just in case you haven't seen, I use trinket.io. It has a built-in GlowScript uh, Python called GlowScript vPython, which uh, you don't have to install anything. Uh, it's great for students. And I like trinket.io because if I give students or you the code, you can actually um, edit it without even having an account. So if I go down here, I don't want Python, I want to do GlowScript. And then you can do blocks or normal code to normal. And I'm just going to paste this. I'm going to save this as Monte Carlo Magnetic Flux. And let's just run and let's save it. And it's running. It should be the same thing as we had before. And if it's not, that's really weird. Okay, so there is an error. T dot. I think I copied something wrong. T dot is undefined. Now I did change just to, let's see, this, this is it. Okay. Uh, so there's GlowScript v, uh, vPython 3.1 and I, something weird happened. I'm not sure, but the other one was on 3.0, so I just switched up to 3.0. Okay. So I have my flux. I have everything. I'm going to start changing stuff. So the first thing is this calculation. This is my calculation. This stuff up here uh, makes my charge and my arrow, which is just for fun. Uh, this calculates the magnetic field at any particular location that I want. That's fine. There's my circle. Uh, there's my ring. Uh, all this stuff, though, I don't need. Let's just get rid of all this stuff. Uh, except for that last part, calculating the flux. Okay. Now, let's say n equals, um, I actually had about 300 points. Let's say 400. Uh, and I'm going to say n equals 0. So I have two n's here. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So I have n 400 is how many pieces I want. n 0, it, lowercase n is my counter when I count up to there. Every time I find a point that's good, I'm going to increase my value of lowercase n until it gets to 400. OK, now I need my dA. So I'm going to say uh, dA. Oh, I use that for somewhere else. 
let's call this uh, um, D D A A, just temporarily. Okay, and I make bad choices all the time. It's it's what we do. Humans do that. So it's going to be the total area, which is uh, pi times r squared divided by n. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and calculate r a a. Let's just call it like that. And that's the radius. That's the radius of my circle, of my tiny little circle that I'm going to add because I want it to look right. Um, so that's going to be equal to uh, pi r squared is equal to d a a. So it's going to be square root d a a divided by pi. Is that right? Pi r squared. So divide by pi takes square root. Yeah. Okay. So now we're ready. Let's do this. So while n is no n is less than n, do the following. Now I'm going to generate all my points. So number one, r temp. R temp is going to be equal to vector uh, 2 times r times random minus 1, 2 times r times random minus 1, 0. So that, remember, this 2 times r ran, oh, random parentheses. It is a function. Uh, so that's going to generate a number between 2r, oh, no. R, oh, let's do this. R times. Yeah, because I need I need this to go from two. It, sh it should be two R times random minus R. Okay, so I just factored out the R. Yeah, that worked. Okay, now. Oh, I need this. Areas equals. Uh, empty list. And this is where I'm going to add all my little pieces into a list so I can use them later. And I should have I should have kept part of that. I can copy it. Okay, so now I get, uh, let's do this. If mag r temp, that's the magnitude of that temporary vector, is less than or equal to big R, the radius of the circle, then I'm going to include it. Then I'm going to say areas equals areas plus uh, I'm going I'm to add a cylinder just because that makes sense. A cylinder uh, and the position is going to be R temp. The radius is going to be equal to R A A. Uh, the axis, so in a cylinder, if it's a, um, it, it, I wish I had, it's like this. Here's a salt shaker. So here's a cylinder. So in Python, we define the position as the location of one end. The radius is the radius of the circle. And then axis is the vector from here to the end. So I want that axis to be in the z direction and really short because I don't want the whole thing to be that long. So axis is going to be a vector uh, 0, 0, and let's say RAA over 2, 4. R A A over four. Uh, that's it. Oh, now I do need. Let's go in and add other things, just like I did before. N hat equals. This is the unit vector for that piece, and that's going to be equal to uh, vector zero one one, which I could use axis actually. Okay, you can add arbitrary uh, attributes to this thing, and then D D A is going to be equal to. What do I call it? DAA, which I know that's dumb, but again, it's fine. Okay, and then also, I, if that's true, I need to add one to n. n equals n plus one, otherwise it'll go on forever. Okay, so let's run this and see. Let's comment out this, and let's comment out that, okay, because it won't run. And let's save it. And we're trying to fill in that square. Okay, and you'll notice right here, you'll say, hey, that's not cool. Okay, that's not filled in. They're overlapping, right? Some of these are overlapping, and I think it's going to be okay. Um, that's why we have those spaces. Let's just do something real quick. Let's go through and add up the total area of all these circles uh, and calculate that. So let's say um, this is actually good to learn how to deal with lists too. So for area in areas, this goes through each element in the areas list and calls it area, and then we can do whatever we want with it. 
let's go up here and say uh, C area, C, C A, that's the area of the total area. Well, I'm gonna add up, I'm gonna look at the area of each piece, add it to that, and then that'll be my area. So C A equals C A plus area dot D A, right? Area dot D A is the size of that little piece. So this should add up to the total thing. Now down here I can say uh, print uh, calc area, let's say MC area, that's Monte Carlo area. It's gonna be equal to CA and it should be units of meter squared. And then I want to calculate the theoretical area, uh, actual area, and that's gonna be equal to pi times r squared squared and python star star meter squared. And let's see if these two agree. That's the same. So, I mean, that doesn't mean it's 100% correct, but that says that the area of all these circles is the total area, even though they overlap and it doesn't look like it fills the whole thing. It does kind of fill the whole thing. And that's only 300, that's only 400 points, right? I could easily do this as a thousand. Will that make you happy? It still doesn't fill it because it does fill it. It just say overlap. Okay, let's go back to 400. Okay, moving right along here. So now I'm going to calculate the flux. Let's just, let's just, I did this already, right? So let's just copy this whole thing and see what I can change and see if that even works. I mean, no point in typing what's already been typed. I don't need to do this area thing anymore. I don't need to do this. Okay, so flux equals zero, deflux, that's just for the, uh, that's gonna change. Uh, for area and areas, our temp is, oh, you also notice up here, we don't have any points outside of the circle, so that's good. Um, our temp equals, area.pos minus charge.pos, that works, right? Because it's still the vector from my charge to my point in my, my calculation. Deflux, this looks all good, that's the same thing. And I'm still using the same dot in hat and, and area.da, so that's good. Uh, area.phi, that's the flux. Opacity, this is not gonna work because I'm gonna have to change that value. Uh, and then, I think it should work. And let's just print out this thing. And this printout. So this last line, print areas 10, I just picked a random one, uh, dot phi, that's the flux for one of those. I can use that to go back and change the deflux max so that I can get this opacity thing to work. I think this is gonna work. I'm gonna be kind of pumped up if it does. Uh-huh. Even Okay, so that color actually looks okay. That's artistic. That's just cool. Okay, so let's see. Um, oh, there was another trick, I remember. Uh, well, let's do that in a second. Um, okay, so let's put this flux at three times 10 to the negative. Let's put it at four times 10 to the negative 11 and try that. Four E negative 11. Okay. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, now I just remembered that I made a calculation, oh, and, and is it the same value? That's what I want, 1.8 times 10 to the negative eight. And if I go back over to the other one, 1 1.78 times 10 to the negative eight. But watch this, if I run it again, one, see, it's gonna change because it's a random value. And this will matter, right? Because if, if I get more over here on this side, where it's closer to the charge, then I'm gonna have a greater total flux. Uh, so you do get some fluctuations here. Um, 1.6, 1.79, but what if I change this to, let's, let's go crazy and do 4,000. What now, the, the total flux changed because each piece size is smaller, but you'll notice that my, uh, the color changed, but the total flux changed to something that's much clearer, 1.776 versus 1.78. So that's pretty good, okay? But I wanna go back to uh, 400. Okay, so there was um, also this, this, yeah, okay. 
So I did this for a uh, Gauss's law. I did I calculated the flux over closed surface and I did this exact same thing with the opacity. And then I remember that there was a commenter maybe on Twitter, and I'm sorry if I forgot your name, uh, that said, oh, turn, make them emissive so they give off their own light. Let's see if I can find that real quick. So let's open a new tab, trinket. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm going off the, I'm going off the deep end here. I don't even know what I'm doing. Uh, so scroll up here, let me make this smaller. Uh, my trinkets. I have so many trinkets it's hard to find. Gauss. Gauss cube. Okay, let's just run this. Okay, this is an older one. I can tell because it's 2.7, there's white background. I didn't, oh, maybe that didn't have white background. Okay, let's try, let's try a different one. My trinkets. Gauss. Gauss, Gauss moving charge. Try this one. That one doesn't have anything on the top. That's weird. It doesn't even say glow script. Why is that? Okay, let's try it again. One more. There was one other one. Gauss moving charge. Hmm. Okay, something happened. Maybe it's called flux. Let's try one more thing, flux. Closed surface flux, dipole. 3.0, okay, this has gotta be it. Okay, let's just see. Yeah. That's a dipole in a box. This is, this is the electric flux, okay? But the same idea. But, but the, the one big difference here is I was using it a cube and squares, it's a little bit easier to add up squares in a square versus adding up squares in a circle. Um, let's see down here when I calculate the flux. Emissive equals true. Okay, so let's go back over here. And when I make my cylinders, which is down here, emissive equals true. Emissive equals true. I don't even sure if I spelled that right. M I S S I V E. M I S S I V E. Okay, let's run it. Yeah, I don't really know that big of a notice that big of a difference, but I guess a little bit. Okay, but that's it. I'm gonna give you the code of this. If you want to watch my other one, you can. Um, I never did. Uh, the flux using a numerical calculation in polar coordinates. I have, I'll include a link to my medium blog post on medium.com where I describe how to do that. And it's kind of cool, uh, but I just don't, I'm not passionate about it. I really like the Monte Carlo way because it feels like a kind of a trick that works and it's just kind of artsy. So, uh, but other than that, have fun with this. That's all.